So recently I've been experimenting with tanks, um, and this thing right here is a product of what I've been doing, and what I've noticed about a lot of tanks from beginners to medium level players is that the tank can do one of two kind of drive options. It can go forward, back, and it can turn like this, but if you try to turn it'll just go like that and you can't really move forward smoothly or you've got the ones where you can turn like this and drive like a car but you can't actually turn at all on the spot so that's what I've been working on and today I'm going to show you how to build this microcontroller I have behind me with a singular power source that you can drive any way you want automatic reverse and everything um keep in mind that the seat works better with higher sensitivity higher sensitivity and also that <laughs> you don't have such powerful tools like a medium electric motor but you know it's got it's got automatic it's all set up for engines so it can work on engines, electric motors, a general clutch coming out of maybe like a nuclear reactor, steam. Re so, you know, it it works really well. So, let's uh let's work on this. Okay, so first things first, you're going to need a little platform. So let's build a new platform. And let's just build it out. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to get just some small wheels. Nothing big. Nothing big. And we'll put some drive wheels at the front. It's not going to be pretty at all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wire those up individually and we need on each side a gearbox doesn't matter which direction but have the secondary gear ratio at a minus one to one so that we have a reverse gear and a clutch on each side not the modular engine clutch although if you want to have two modular engines um, that is perfectly fine, it is something that was done in real life. Um, if you look at many World War II tanks, and even um, pre-war tanks, so what post-World War I to pre-World War II, a lot of them used an idea of having two inline sixes or inline fours powering each side. But we're gonna use a singular power source. So what we're essentially creating is a tank differential. Now I'm just going to get this all linked up to here and I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a motor here and some batteries this is obviously a bit scuffed and let's just connect out all of our electricity for now so we've got the very kind of basic platform we'll need a seat as well because we need some way to control it and now let's get started on our microcontroller okay so once you're in the microcontroller editor let's just name it something so i'm going to just call this tank control and this particular setup is going to need seven nodes because we need a left clutch, a right clutch, a left gearbox, a right gearbox, W, S, A, and D. And also the throttle coming out to the engine. So, yeah, that's seven. So, you know, if you want to make it a three by three, go ahead. I'm going to make it a two by four. I just feel like, I mean, that's it's not massively more practical, but either way. So, first things first, name it something that you're not going to forget. Don't worry about description if you don't want to. If you want to make a little symbol, make a little symbol. I might just do that right now. So let's make kind of like a tank looking thing. Oh, not too bad. Okay, so that's that's our little 
no. Okay. <laughs> that's our that's our tank. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add seven logic nodes. So the first one, let's call our left gearbox. Now you could do L gearbox, LG, whatever you want to do. I'm just calling it left gearbox so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And then I'm going to do one for our right gearbox as well. We need a left clutch. And a right clutch. Now with all these, put these to outputs because we don't receive data from gearboxes and clutches, we send it. So we're going to put that out. Next, we need our throttle output. And this will be controlling your engine throttle or anything else that you're using so that you get the optimum power. If you're using an electric motor, you might want to sh shovel that into a electric motor controller. That means that you get the optimal kind of power usage. Next is next, we are going to get a number input and it's going to be our W and S axes on our seat. And then another one which is going to be our A and D axes on our seat. Okay, so let's go into our microcontroller and we can see we've got our 7 bits, so let's just separate them out. So we've got our throttle, our right clutch, our left clutch, our right gearbox, and our left gearbox. We'll just move this out of the way first. So, first things first, we want to get an add, a subtract bit here, and we're going to put the WS into the A of both of them, the A and D into the B of both of them. Now, what this does is it means that if we turn right we'll get a positive value from a and d and this means that we will go to here we'll add this with our throttle which would be zero and we'd get a positive value we did this it would be zero because our ws is zero and our a and d is positive so nothing minus positive is negative it's a bit complicated to explain like that um i could explain it more in depth but I want to keep the video short. Now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to get an absolute of each one. You're probably thinking, well, hang on, what's the point of that? It's it's just how I've designed it. You know, it, you could do it a simpler way, um, but I found that this works really well. So let's grab our clutches and just plug them in. And that is our clutch is done. So when we turn any way, It'll work. Alrighty then. Now what we're going to do is we are going and also what this means is that we can actually get different number values and different turning rates depending on what these are. Um, other systems wouldn't exactly work that way. Next what we're going to do is we're going to get another absolute and we're just going to put that down here connected to our A and D. And then we're going to so this is going to be like a if you if you can imagine a parabola with this being the x-axis this is the y this is kind of like the y-axis again hard to explain like that but just roll with it next we're going to get a multiply and what this is going to be doing is we're going to add a property number because we're now working on our um control for our throttle so let's just put this in so this is a multiplied by b and what we're going to do is we are going to get a, let's call this throttle at full lock. And what I mean by that is this number will be, so this will be outputting this number when this is at one. This will be at one when we're at full lock from A D. So, Hence, name at full lock. 
So, what throttle do we want our motor, our engine, our clutch from our turbine to be at full turning speed? I'm going to do like a maybe 0.3 for the electrical motor, but usually on an engine it would probably be something more like 0.8 um, because engines typically don't have as much torque as electric motors. But that's okay. Next things next, what we're going to do is we're just going to add our WNS so that that way we've got well yeah we've we've got a full controlling throttle that we can output so we can link our throttle straight up and as you can see we, we don't have much left we've just got our two gearboxes that we can bring down now this is the more this is the more complicated but it's not complicated in the amount of logic that i've used it's complicated in the explanation so we're going to get a few less sands three to be precise so we're going to put one here one here and one here not four, three. And we're going to get absolute values and we're going to put to them into our A values. We're going to get our add value here and we're going to put that into our A value as well. Now, next things next, we need XOR gates and I'll explain why in a second, but we're going to put A to each one and this into each one here. Left, right gearbox. Now, what this is doing is it's going, okay, so let's say that, actually, I must check that, hang on. I tell a lie, I've forgotten about something. We actually need to go all the way from our add and our subtract to the lesson. And so what this is doing, and this is probably a bit confusing, so I'll just bring this down here so that we can see a bit better. But what this is doing is it's going, okay, so is A less than B? And if B is always zero, so when is this less than zero? Let's say our AD was one and WS was zero. Okay, so this would be minus one. This would be one because our we're adding WS and AD here, and we're going WS minus AD, so this would be minus one, this would be one. Is A less than one? Well, is A less than B? Well, no, because A is more than B. A is one, B is zero. So we're gonna put nothing out here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get a a and D, well, I guess we've got our minus one. Well, min minus one is less than B, so we're gonna put a po positive value out. And next, and then we've got to check our throttle. Well, our throttle is gonna be AD, full lock. It's gonna be 0 0.3. That is more than one, more than zero. So it's A more than B, A, a less than B. No, it is not. So we're going to get a no here, no here, which means that we'll get nothing out of here and something out of here. So this gearbox will be put into reverse. This gearbox will not. And that way, on our left gearbox, when we hold D, this will be full clutch, engaged. This will be no, or reversed, and also full clutch. Right, let's save this. And let's put our tank example. Oh my goodness. I have named. Oh my goodness. Um, this is what happens when you toy around tanks over the years. Okay, so we'll link everything up. So we've got our AD, WS, our throttle. Go to our motor in this case. Usually it goes to an engine, personally. Right clutch, left clutch, right gearbox left gearbox electrics are all connected click on the microcontroller yep let's do 0 0.3 for the throttle and let's give this a spin so if we hold w we go forwards if we hold s we can go backwards now keep in mind that i would usually stick the seat sensitivity up if we hold a we spin we turn sideways 
turn the other way and we're at full lock you can see that we're moving our full lock all the way up there so that's pretty good if we hold a and w we can turn and then w and d we can turn as well and you can see that i'm just i'm just driving around you know i mean yes i'd put the sensitivity up personally um and you could make this a little bit better by maybe controlling the throttle a bit more because we're giving this over one throttle um not that it's going to change much but yeah so anyway um yeah, that's how you make a really well-rounded, easy to control, easy to make tank controller that does everything. I mean, we've got full control over our tank. We've got automatic forward and reverse, we've got correct steering. We can turn on the spot. We can turn while moving. We can go really fast. We can go really slow. We can do everything. So, and that's all from something that's relatively small. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this um if you did subscribe i think as i'm recording this video i'm at 399 so yeah um if someone could just hit the button it would honestly mean a lot i mean i know 400 doesn't sound like a milestone but to me it is but anyway guys yeah thank you for watching this video and i will see you in the next one bye